In the span of three days in January 2020, three inmates would be dead at Mississippi State Penitentiary. One man, Gabriel Carmen, would take his own life in his cell. Officers reported that they performed a cell check at 6.20 p.m. 20 minutes later, an inmate would yell for staff and they would respond. When they attempted to open the door, it was jammed from the inside. Maintenance staff had to pry open the door. By that time, it was too late. Carmen was pronounced dead at 7.21 p.m. This was January 18th, 2020. Two days later, a fight would break out at the facility. Two more inmates would end up dead. Timothy Hudspeth and James Talley would die from blunt force injuries. Mississippi DOC would try to claim that these were isolated incidents, saying that it was not a continuation of the recent retaliatory killings. That's right, there were more murders earlier in the month. MDOC received public backlash from the tweet and attempted to clarify even further, saying, we are investigating further now. Incidents like these would cause the entertainment industry to get involved, and rappers Jay-Z and Yo Gotti stepped in to help solve the problem. More on that later. Today on Chasing Crime, we'll be looking at the most dangerous prison in Mississippi and one of the most controversial prisons in the United States, Mississippi State Penitentiary, or Parchment Farm. Located in what could be one of the largest prison plots in the country, the prison complex is immensely large. In total, it covers 18,000 acres, or 28 square miles, of land in northwest Mississippi. The prison sits in an unincorporated area in Sunflower County in the Mississippi River Delta. With not much else around, the prison is 100 miles south of Memphis and 131 miles from the state capital, Jackson. The land for the prison was purchased in 1900 for $80,000, which would be nearly $3 million today. The prison and its farming operations were turning a huge profit by 1904, raking in $185,000. That would be over $6 million today. The prison turned into a big profit maker for the state. Throughout this time, the state was purchasing adjacent properties, gobbling up land to add to its prison industry. Prison abuse was rampant and open from the beginning of this prison until a landmark case that would force the prison to make some changes. Gates' first collier would, among other things, end the trustee system and held that many forms of corporal punishment violated the cruel and unusual punishment clause of the Eighth Amendment. The trustee system had offenders guarding other inmates. There were reports that officers in the prison would order the trustees to shoot other inmates. It was during this time that Mississippi abandoned the for-profit model of the state-run prison. As you can see, abuses at this prison go back many years and set the tone for the ongoing issues plaguing this facility. The prison is not one facility, but many on the same property. Each facility is designated as a unit, with many in the prison no longer operational and closed. According to the Mississippi Department of Corrections, the prison has 2,542 beds, 52 support buildings, and seven different housing units ranging in size. As you can see, various units dot the prison property, some open and some relics of the past. Unit 29 and Unit 32 are the most well-known, currently open facilities at the prison, and not for good reasons. The prison has faced lawsuit after lawsuit due to conditions at the facility. An inspection report from 2019, which I'll link below, shows the broken down condition of the prison in Unit 29. The showers, sinks, and cells are in disrepair making the facility appear almost uninhabitable. Many blame the budget in 2014 for the squalid conditions. State lawmakers reduced the overall budget by $215 million. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, we know that many prison budgets are way overblown. But here, we see the impact of taking away money that is meant for corrections. By 2020, many were questioning why the prison was still open. Also in 2020, the prison administration reopened the notorious Unit 32 after it closed 10 years earlier because of its poor condition. These poor conditions have led to more aggression and frustration from inmates. Being housed here resulted in high amounts of violence at the prison, as evidenced in the introduction. 
The Mississippi Department of Corrections has reported that since 2020, 102 inmates have died in custody, with almost half of those occurring at Parchment. Rappers Jay-Z and Yo Gotti helped to file a federal lawsuit with inmates due to the conditions at Parchment Prison. They are also releasing a documentary called Exposing Parchment on June 17th about the conditions. Let me know in the comments if you plan on checking it out. I know I will be. Since 1972, two officers at the prison have been murdered by inmates. Sergeant James Meeks was shot and killed by an inmate on September 12, 1972. The inmate, George Scales, shot Meeks after taking his firearm from him while on a work detail. Scales was serving a 20-year sentence at the time for manslaughter. Scales would receive a life sentence, but was released in 1993. Correctional officer Argentra Cotton was stabbed by inmate Willie Russell in the neck and back in 1989. He was able to get away from Russell and was transported to a local hospital, but would pass away there. He was convicted and sentenced to death for the murder of Cotton. Russell has been a problem inmate throughout his time in custody. He was at the prison on robbery and kidnapping charges. But prior to this incident, in 1987, Russell had escaped from custody and led police on a high-speed chase while he was being treated off-grounds at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. In 2000, he would make a homemade zip gun and fired at officers while on death row. In 2015, after 27 years on death row, his sentence was overturned due to his mental disability. Staff will make poor decisions inside prisons, but some end up on the other side of the law. Candace Mason was charged with having an alleged sexual relationship with an inmate. Although news stories didn't update the outcome of the case, it appears she is now working for the school district in Cleveland, Mississippi, not far from the prison as a second grade teacher. In 2016, Deputy Warden Melvin Hilson, who was involved with the canine unit at the prison, assaulted an inmate in the medical area of the facility. According to Assistant Attorney General Kristen Clark, the defendant abused his position as a corrections officer by unlawfully assaulting an inmate in his custody. Hilson was fired and subsequently convicted of a civil rights violation. He would receive a 24-month federal prison sentence. Hilson is currently incarcerated at FCI Texarkana. Mississippi State Penitentiary is the home of death row and the death chamber for the state. From 1804 to 1952, all executions were carried out in the county where the offender was sentenced, usually by hanging. A mobile electric chair was used in the state from 1940 to 1952. From then on, all executions have taken place at Parchman. There have been 23 since 1976. Currently, there are 35 men on death row. Until 1984, the gas chamber was used. Unlike any other state, the prison commissioner gets to choose how the condemned will die. Lethal injection, gas chamber, electrocution, or firing squad. Mississippi State Penitentiary has been exposed as one of the most rundown prisons in America. Public pressure is mounting for the state to make changes as many third world countries have better facilities. This was another prison profile by Chasing Crime. Thanks for watching. As always, see you next time.